Thanks for checking out the Boss and Roll channel. If you want to support what's going on here while getting amazing perks like the Discord community, have me play your deck, and my list in Cyborg Guides before tournaments, join the Patreon or YouTube membership. This channel is made possible by these amazing sponsors. Check them out and support them. Their links are in the video description. Thanks again for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back for another Boss and Roll Legacy video. Today, you know what it is. This is Initiative Stasis. Once again, submitted to the channel by the original donor, Joyami, who wanted to see the conclusion of the trilogy. The only rules for this build were to have some ranger effect and make it as competitive as possible. The ranger effect I went with is exclusively scrim ranger for this one. At the end of the last league, and what I'm talking about here, if you're new to the channel, is I've played this deck twice before. Once was an ice cold brew, once was a little bit updated, and now this is with two full leagues of experience with the deck. My notes at the end of the last one were that actual Quarian Ranger, the one mana version, wasn't doing a lot for the deck. Scrib Ranger was an all-star though. We're just at four Scrib Rangers, zero original Quarian Ranger now. Other things identified were that Teferi, who slows the sunset, was, although it's a self-contained stasis engine, it was the clunkiest card in the deck. I boarded it out all the time. That's just out of the deck now. And the first two builds somehow Derevi completely bamboozled me into thinking it was a combo. But Derevi, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, you can untap a target creature. That is basically just ugly vigilance. For some reason, I thought Derevi connecting would give me a mana back out of High Arc and continue dealing damage. But it doesn't. So that card's out. It just doesn't even do what I wanted it to do. I also observed that the combo is not focused enough that you can get away with playing zero removal in the main deck and just try to get the hooks in backed by Force of Will as fast as possible. All those cards I cut made room for three Swords of Plowshares in the main, which opened up a bunch of sideboard slots. Things like Hydro Blast, we lost to Minsk and Boo a number of times in the previous league. Got an answer to that one now. And one of the big factors I had to keep in mind is that in cutting Teferi's and Derevi's, those were all blue cards. And I had to keep my blue count card up, my blue card count up for Force of Will. So I went from one Preordain up to three. Preordain's not sexy, but it finds the action spells. Really, the action spells in this deck are just Stasis and White Plume Adventure. And then from there, we just gotta make that happen. Preordain increases consistency, putting 11 cantrips in the deck instead of 9. And it's a blue card for Force. It checks all the boxes we want. This one is not messing around with any cute cards. This is just resolve White Plume Adventure and Stasis together on a board. And then you win eventually. And that's the plan. Let's go do it. I'm on the play in round 1. Against El Lobo. I believe that means a wolf or the wolf. Scary. But I am going to keep this hand. I wish it had another land in it, but we played 20 of those. I've got Ponder. I've got Force Backup. Got a Mana Dork. If I rip the land, I have Turbo Adventure or Turbo. What is this? Initiative. Turbo Initiative. With Force Backup. We'll see what happens here. Basic Island. Uh-oh, a Lotus Petal. Getting stormed out. Come on, land. Too easy. Okay, I'm going to get a Tropical Island here. And shove my initiative, Dingus. Their Lotus Petal has me a little nervous. Okay, my thing just resolved. We're good to go then. I was going to say, if they fight over my initiative creature, I might not fight back. Because they have another one I can deploy next turn, but if I force over White Plume, resolve White Plume, and then they just combo out somehow next turn, I don't actually get anywhere. They could combo out this turn anyway. This looks like show and tell to me. Oh, it's Thought Lash combo. Okay. I will put a Force of Will on this. This just isn't getting better. And I could stick Stasis next turn, which would make it hard for them to Oracle. Cool. I'm going into the forge. Let's just kill the opponent. Two plus one counters. And attack for six. 
in the big moment of truth, does stasis resolve? If this resolves, I think we win. If it doesn't, we might have some problems. Okay, we're in there. I get to untap Noble Hierarch during their turn. That pays for stasis indefinitely. The land in my hand can play another White Plume and just shove the clock, but they are on a very short clock anyway. I am going to go into the trap. I'm here to kill my opponent against their combo deck. And the other White Plume Adventurer gives me two attackers next turn, and I go into the Throne of the Dead 3, and then I complete the dungeon, then I untap all my creatures every turn. Two triggers, untap Hierarch, and untap the other White Bloom. They are D-O-B, and stuck under Stasis. I guess they could have a bunch of fast mana and Paradigm Shift, but no, the Lotus Petals would be in the graveyard, and then even if you have all your Lotus Petals in land here, you, there's not a way to navigate that. Okay, we're playing against Thought Lash Combo. This is a deck that I'm not specifically set up to battle. Endurance, this is not really the type of Thassa's Oracle Combo deck where Endurance is good. I have played Rest in... I have played a number of the Blue Oracle decks, and Rest in Peace can be wonky because it messes with your Paradigm Shift. You have to do everything in one turn. And you're all in. If Paradigm Shift resolves and then Oracle doesn't, you're just out of cards. I don't think Swords to Plowshares is where I want to be here. The question is where do I want to be? Collector Oof can turn off Lotus Petals. I don't think that's important. Fluster Storm can help me win a counter war. We're both Force of Will decks. We're both kind of combo decks. My combo, when it happens, it ends up in a prison situation, which is a kind of a weird way to describe a combo deck. But ultimately, I am trying to get two or three cards together in play, which plays more like a combo deck. Rest in peace. I don't know. Do I want Paradigm Shift to be an option? It does make Paradigm Shift squeaky clean once they get there, though. And maybe I should just bring in some Endurances, and, and it can attack and block uh, if I need to push for damage, and it it's not irrelevant versus... Thassa's Oracle either. Uh, I don't know. I'm just not set up for this matchup and trying to cover whatever holes I can. I'm going to keep my hand. Spell Pierce is a nice piece of interaction. Hopefully they don't Chalice the Void me. Uh-oh. Or turn one me. Defense Grid Tilt. Okay. Uh, we might be dead next turn. I'm going to Ponder now that Defense... Or now that Spell Pierce doesn't matter. Force Will doesn't matter. And the other two Rangers don't matter either. I'm going to shuffle my library. Reordain. Okay, are we dead? Okay, uh, just using Impulse is reasonable to me. They have one colorless floating, so they could shift one card into their graveyard and then Oracle next turn. Not that Rest in Peace would have had time to set up in front of this. I don't know. Uh, it's just they're doing their thing. And if, they, if it comes together, it comes together. It's their fail rate versus how quickly I can get my hooks in here. All right, they burnt off the unspent mana, did not shift right away. I like that. I think I need to preordain rather than invest in a ranger. Is that true? Does that matter? I'm going to fetch for another tropical island. I guess I'll look at my deck, see if Savannah makes more sense. I don't think it does. I boarded out basically all the white cards. I'm going to fetch for another tropical island and play preordain. I fetched first because if you top top a preordain, you don't want to have to shuffle. Well, there's Adventurer. I'll take that. If they are sputtering behind a defense grid, I'd like to apply pressure. And if they execute their combo, I'm dead anyway. So let me take my proactive card. Don't play around things you can't play around. That's one of the rules of magic. Okay, is there an out here if I preordain instead of Adventure? I don't believe so. Yeah, there's not a, a disenchant anywhere in the deck. Maybe there should be. Okay, Savannah, I will gain the initiative and pass the turn and probably die. Put an island in my hand to pass and uh, go ahead. If you have Oracle, you win. Even if you don't have Oracle, Thought Lash makes it really hard for me to deal damage to them. All right, yeah, Oracle, you got it. Okay. 
Probably should have waited to see their whole deck in exile before I, I just snap conceded. It's all good though. Defense grid. Energy flux could mess with the defense grid. And they floated that lotus petal in play for the whole game. Yeah, I think flux is probably better than endurance here. It's also blue for force of will, which I'm never upset about. Okay, let's go. On the play with turn two adventurer. With force backup. Let's do it. No stasis in sight. Hope I don't need it. Noble Hierarch. Let's go. I know it's not normally the type of Bant that I play, but turn one Noble Hierarch on the play is one of my favorite things to do in Magic the Gathering. Full stop. Feels so good every time. Okay, here comes the beats. We're in there. Tutor up the island. Got plenty of green mana. And I do have a Scrib Ranger, so we're just stasis away from, from the lock. I think I need to Lost Well here rather than Forge. It's not about getting them dead fast, it's about finding my last hook and getting it in. Fence Grid, and I have mana to pay for Force of Will, so that's not a, a deal breaker. Unless they go off right now, then it would be a bummer. I guess now... That they've defense gridded and i'm not spending mana on my turn anyway i am gonna forge let's go let's try to make my opponent dead because without having to worry about my own stasis i can just push a bunch of damage here and i get an untap so i can even cast brainstorm or i could play ranger and then ranger can untap noble hierarch if i need to force a will next turn and then i keep blue card and Brainstorm available. Cool. Oh, that was free anyway. I don't even need to untap it. Yeah, I have the three to pay for a defense grid. They're taking 11 next turn on the board. There's Thought Lash. This is the one I want to force of will. Because that also keeps them alive for a long time when I'm trying to make them dead. They're at one on the board right now. Go into the trap. Trap plus combat turns off Ancient Tomb, and if I can find another Exalted creature, I just win. Oh, that works too. Uh, let's see. I guess I'll Brainstorm first. Exploration and Preordain. Cool. Put back Forest and Exploration. I do want the Exploration, but I could Preordain. Okay, if I... I know what both of my top cards are. I guess I just want to attack for six. Put them to one. Attacking with the one creature and getting the exalted is the same as attacking with both creatures. Except I get to keep one untapped this way. Which will help if I'm jamming stasis right now, which I am. I'm just deciding how far I'm going on that. I am going to preordain. I don't even think I need exploration. They untap Noble Hierarch. Pick up my forest. Play my forest and play stasis. And their own defense grid stops this from doing anything, or it stops them from being able to fight back, and this game should be over. Cool. Send it. I guess if they can kill Noble Hierarch, but that doesn't matter because then stasis just dies and I attack them with Scrib Ranger. Cool. Not sure how we lose this one. Sheldock Isle is not the answer. And we got the GG's. Took turns comboing each other out. Quick initiative, all three games. Feels good. Good start. On to the next one. If you've ever wanted to learn how to play poker, there's no better way than PokerCoaching.com's Master the Fundamentals course, which I'm excited to give all of you for free. This course is separated into 19 short sections that will make sure you understand everything you need to know to play well and beat your friends. The first section is on the rules of the game, then you'll learn about hand ranges, equity, basic strategies, and a whole lot more. By the end of the course, you'll know everything you need to know in order to give you the best chance of success at No Limit Hold'em. Check out the link in the video description to pokercoaching.com slash free crash course. I'm on the play in round two against a Yorian strategy. I am going to keep this one lander with, this is basically the same opening hand I kept last round. It's a one lander with Hierarch, Ponder, and Force of Will. 
this season, Dungeoneer, was White Plume Adventure, I'd be happier, but I'm not going to complain. Now we'll see what flavor of Yorion they are. Basic Plains, please play Aether Vile. Okay, cool. Uh, Vile doesn't mess with my mana, which is the thing I was most worried about here. <laughs> That's such a tease. I drew the White Bloom Adventure, but not actually helpful yet. I would like hit my land drop, and I would like Brainstorm to be under it. A little Hierarch. And I can attack for two here, or I can hold up Plow. I'm going to hold up Plow. They are Death and Taxes. If they play Thalia, then I can't Plow it. If they play Stoneforge Mystic, I'd be happy to clear it out. Okay, Thalia works, unfortunately. I right, draw for turn, it's Brainstorm. That means I can play White Plume Adventurer, search for a basic, and then be able to plow through Thalia. Season Dungeoneer is bigger, but I need the mana. That also gives me a shuffle on the land that's on top of my deck right now that I don't necessarily want. Forest and play it. And I will pass the turn. I guess I could have attacked there. No, because if they violin Mom, I need to clear that. Okay, they didn't violin Mom. So I could have attacked for two there and gotten an untap. That would have been punished pretty hard if they had the Mother of Runes. Because then I can't plow on my own turn and then Mother's active for theirs. These main deck swords to plowshare is looking great right now. And I am going to go into Lost Well on my turn, assuming I still have the initiative. Death and Taxes is built to just sort of turtle up and remove threats and not die to creatures. I want to outvalue them, and I'll beat them eventually that way. I want to find a stasis, is what I want. Recruiter of the Guard. I could force of will this, but I like Brainstorm a lot. I'm holding Swords to Plowshares. Recruiter can get Stoneforge here. I think I am actually going to force of will this. I don't want them to have the pick of their deck. My engine's online. Their engine is Aether Vile plus Recruiter of the Guard. I want an engine. I want them to not have an engine. And I'm going to save the Swords to Plowshares because it's not actually winning them the game right now. Or the Thalia doesn't matter that much. Lost Well. Definitely want Savannah on the bottom. Do I want another White Plume? Because I can play Season Dungeoneer. Go into Stash. One, two, three, four. And then next turn I go into Catacombs and immediately trigger the throne. I could just go Turbo Initiative here. Yeah, I'll keep that. That sounds pretty good. And I'm going to attack for 5. With the backup White Plume and the Swords of Plowshares, there's not a lot I'm worried about here. Either blocking. They have a second Thalia in hand, or they just don't think she's important here. And that confirms I was right not to use the plow. And right, I'm going to play the other White Plume and just have all my creatures untapped, the maximum mana available. Go into the stash. Get a treasure. I pass, untap all my stuff. Is this the other Thalia? That would explain a chump block. Lion Sash. Okay, I don't care about that. Untap Hierarch and White Plume. I will be in the Throne of the Dead 3 next turn. Unless they have their own White Plume Adventurer. Sometimes Death in Texas plays one season Dungeoneer. The violin in the late game. But I can reclaim the initiative there. Both through combat and then play it. They're down to three cards. Lion Sash can become 3-3 this turn. If they attack with it. Okay. Uh, we're getting an Aether Vial activation. I'm not going to plow in response. A Recruiter happens. This can't get Seasoned Engineer, it's too big. Too thick. I get Solitude, but they're pretty far behind Solitude being a thing. Stoneforge for Cauldra, maybe, could try to poke through and take the initiative. It's important to note I've done zero damage to my opponent so far, and both of us have our engines going. Stoneforge Mystic is the get. Stoneforge resolves. They have some sort of cool sword. That would be a thing. But it's Cauldra, that's not a thing. Yeah, I will plow the Stone Forge at the end step. I just don't want that to be part of the game. They get a spooky skeleton right now. 
Rough Return, and then Seasoned Dungeoneer puts me into the Throne of the Dead 3. And it makes my attacker untouchable, un -f with a bull. Into the Throne we go. Not a whole lot of creatures left in my deck, but any one of them is good. Yeah, this White Bloom Adventure qualifies. It'll also hit my land drop. I'll get an island. Then play my island, and I'll make a big protection from creatures attack. I get to explore. Put Windswept Teeth in my hand. And five damage goes through. Okay. Uh, my board is enormous. Death and Taxes can be wiggly and tricky. We'll see if they can find their way out of this one. And now all my creatures untap. <laughs> Three times. If I had instants to cast, I would actually have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I would have eight mana right now. Or nine with the treasure. Unfortunately, I don't have instants to cast. And I could just get the Scrib Ranger in for air quotes free. But I'd rather have one trick left up my sleeve if they play to the board. I don't currently have a flyer available. But I could, as a surprise. I have creatures that are white, black, and green. If they have a sword of X and Y in their hand, it would be hard to make that connect. One super cool thing that's happened so far is I've indicated in no way that I'm a anything other than just a Bant initiative deck. They haven't seen a Scrib Ranger. They haven't seen a Stasis or anything that would be weird. Here to the lab, sure. And Yorion in hand, which can file in next turn. I'm going to go to my turn. And I think I want to forge now. I, I think it's time to make them dead. Though Lost Will lost well for finding stasis. Well, they're dead in two hits anyway. And the forge doesn't change that. Or they're not dead in one hit, are they? That would be 8, 9, 10. And then they get zapped next turn down to 1. No, uh, it's a two-turn clock either way. So I'm going to scry. And I found stasis, cool. Okay, bottom, top. I have no problem revealing that I'm a stasis deck if it means I uh, win the game. Hiding information is never better than winning the game. Yeah, explore, put a savanna in my hand. Opponent takes eight. They can vial in Yorion, but that's all they're going to be able to do when I cast this stasis. And pass the turn. Untap all my creatures multiple times. A Yorion does not stabilize none of these creatures in play. I, I guess flickering Yorion getting solitude can buy them one turn of life. Caracas. Caracas can loop Yorion, except not really because Caracas, they only get one activation out of it. Okay, and they did not put Yorion in and tutor for solitude. They might just already have solitude. There's one mystery card in their hand. It's a Yorion, Cauldra, and whatever they drew last turn. Pay for stasis, draw my card. I will make what I hope is a lethal attack. All right, looks like someone has a solitude, but why would they do it now? I could just attack with a different creature. This is solitude. Interesting. Oh, okay. Taking out that one, so now your blockers hold up. Okay, that makes sense. Got it. Okay. I will just attack with all my creatures then, or that that's not good. The spooky skeleton has menace, and the six six versus eight eight. Now I have to do combat math. This sucks. So if they block, if they want to kill a six six white bloom adventure, it's going to cost them two of their three power creatures, and then if they double block skeleton, it's going to cost them the rest of their creatures. So I'll attack with these two. The four menace is better than the the two exalted. And now they have Yorion and Cauldra locked in their hand forever. No mana, no vile. They're a hero for trying to play this out, though. If they double block Skeleton in a way where they don't get two for one, then White Bloom Adventurer stays in play. Oh, just one little block. Okay. Might as well play a land, and then I'll pass the turn. And untap all my stuff three times. They're making Lion Sash bigger. It's still smaller than my 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, the cool thing about Stasis versus Back to Basics or Blood Moon or whatever also shuts up Aether Vial. 
Oh, we did it. Did have to reveal the stasis at the end. It's okay, though. Not a huge deal. Swords to Plowshares. This is a matchup for that. Spell Pierce. It's not really a matchup for that. Swords to Plowshares. And I could bring in Collector Oof if I want to mess with their vials and their equipments. Endurance is just a chonky body I can put into play. I don't like Energy Flux. By the time that they're doing equipment stuff, they usually have lots of mana. I'd rather just shut it off with Oof. Okay, this is my plan. Almost pre-boarded for this. Main deck source of plowshares, big upgrade from previous versions. Okay, I've got Birds of Paradise and Stasis ready to go. I'm going to keep. Need a White Plume Adventurer to stabilize here. Brainstorm. I'm going to Savannah Bird. And leaving up the planes like that, it could just be because they're an 80 card mono white deck and they didn't have a play to make, or they could have source of plowshares. We'll find out shortly. That's not worth a force of will to me. I've got a bunch of mana in my hand. I don't have the white plume. It's not like I'm turboing out here. Wasteland was always a possibility. Like I said, not worried about it with my, the mana I have available. All right, Captain Scribby's here. I'm going to fetch a basic island and get preordain going. The basic island also locks in Brainstorm for next turn. There's a White Plume Adventure. That's a someday thing. But I do need it. I'm actually just going to top top these. The Scrib Ranger represents a land drop, even if I have to do it the hard way. And then getting the adventurer going. Very important to my strategy. Mother of Runes. I hate to force of will this, but it's a big problem for me. That's how they take the initiative. That's how they beat me up. Not interested. I'm gonna drop Savannah. Even if they have another Wasteland, I can drop in Scrib Ranger, pick up the Savannah. It's slow, but it's card advantage. That's not a Wasteland. Zone Forge Mystic is troublesome, though. Let's see where this is going. Probably straight to Cauldra Town would be my guess. Yep. Okay, end step Scrib Ranger. Hope I just draw a land and I don't have to scrib my land drop, but it's there if I want it. Cool. Now the question is, do I White Plume Adventurer? I think the answer is yes. Uh, I could brainstorm, try to find Swords to Plowshares, and then... Like, if they Cauldron next turn, they take the initiative. I do have two creatures that can take it back, and then I can Stasis after that, but my Stasis lock's not really in yet. There's four Plows in the deck. I could just commit to a slapping the initiative back and forth situation, which is risky against death and taxes for sure. But I think I'd rather do it that way. I'll get a tropical island to round out what mana I have available. I'm about to get an additional basic forest. Oh, I should have gotten Savannah here. Or no, I, I have Scrub Ranger to protect from mana denial. I'll have white if I want it. And I get a free attack here, because that's going to untap. In a variety of ways. There's a pause in my end step, like they have Swords to Plowshares, and they're deciding if they need to kill one of these creatures. Path to Exile. Wow, deal. I mean, it sucks that I lost a creature, but I'll take a ramp in my, my mana deck, my mana hungry combo prison deck. Okay, so the plan here is to get hit by Cauldra. They take the initiative, and then hopefully I can take it back and lock them under stasis with my flying creature. That's the plan, anyway. See if it shakes out that way. I just need their last three cards in hand to not be removal spells. Tutor the planes. There's the planes. File is a someday problem, but I don't care right now. I've gotten to untap. Now Brainstorm is live at the very least. And I will attack with my creature. Try to get the initiative back. If I do this, I think we're in good shape. Oh yeah, okay. I have the initiative back. And I want a Lost Well. Swords to Plowshare is pretty good. Tropical Island on the bottom. Plow on top. Main phase to play the forest. And then blue-green stasis. I can play... I can pick up and pay for stasis with Tropical Island every turn. At least until they find a Wasteland. Or I guess I should have played Tropical Island untapped this turn and not played that forest from my hand. Whoops. Might have messed that up. Hope I don't get punished too hard. 
I have the stash, that can get me through another stasis activation as well. Or stasis payment, not really an activation. Rashad and Port, that's a beating. I hope they don't notice that I'm in the stash. Okay, end step. I'm going to untap Scrib Ranger, picking up Trop. We got to my upkeep, so the stash, they either saw it or they're planning something longer term. I will pay, drop the trop, and might as well keep attacking. I have untap this Scrib Ranger, flash in the other Scrib Ranger, and Sword Supply is available if something comes out of Vile. And I get a Spooky Skeleton next turn, which is an additional creature that starts to lock up this board. The second Rashadden board. Neat. Okay, this turn, I am not going to untap Scrub Ranger in the end step, because that's not important. It's not when I need to do that. Or one Skeleton. Pay for Stasis. Second Stasis. Now I'm going to untap Scrub Ranger with my Trop. Play the trap and attack for one. Yeah, being in the stash on exactly that turn kept my stasis around. That was really clutch. And I'm in the throw next turn and we're we're just going. If they can flicker wisp my treasure out of Aether Vial and then port my trap, stasis goes away. But I'm still in the throne for a turn cycle and I can plow Cauldra and then we're just That does let them reset all of their stuff. They get their Aether Vial back and everything. Little risky. Recruiter. Okay, they've tapped out for this. That means I'm not getting ported. Let's see what is happening. Do they have their well they can't tutor season dungeoneer? What's the get here? Something cool from Vile. Lauren. Okay, Lauren destroys stasis, which would happen on my turn. So they get the first untap. Okay. That's annoying, but I am in the throne, so I'm not too worried about it. I can just play the other stasis, right? Just double up, and then they can't get out of this in one shot. Enter the throne. Season Dungeoneer. Yeah. Right back to the top of the basement. Get a forest. I would have... I guess I wouldn't prefer White Plume there, though it's close. Uh, the untap. But I don't have any mana dorks, but the untap is nice. Oh, there's White Bloom. Still don't have any mana dorks. I'm going to untap the fairy, picking up the trop, play the trop, and none of my things are party members. I have a skeleton and a fairy ranger. So I don't get to explore here. I'll just attack for, for the largest number that I have available. Now, serious question. If I play Stasis right now, they can't unlock the game with Loran right away. But then I have to pay for two Stasises. And then they can just blow up the one I didn't pay for next turn. And I survive this turn cycle with just Swords to Plowshares to protect me. I think taking another turn with Stasis in play... That gets me Season Dungeoneer, it gets me the Forge, it sets up the Trap. I think this is where I need to be. Wish I had found another blue source anywhere along the line here. But this is the way. And Lauren could destroy my treasure, and then that kills both Stasises next turn. Or they could just not Lauren and wait. They're doing the same math I just did. Right now. They pitch cast Solitude was the play. Exiling the Loren. Okay. That's the plan? What do we do with this? Takes out my Scribby. That's fair. Exiling Loren, though, that was the way out of stasis. Okay. I mean, they don't know I have another Scribby, obviously. But losing the Loren was really interesting. Yeah, so I pay for one of these stasises with my treasure. Then I make my land drop. Drop another Scribby, and that doesn't get me out of it, actually. Uh, I am going to go into Forge and try to kill my opponent. Forge. Onto this. And I will not pay for this stasis. And I will pay for this stasis. Draw for turn. Another source of plowshares. 
I make my attack. Gigantic eight point hit. Puts White Plume Adventure into the graveyard. Now it's a nine point hit. And then Stasis dies next turn, but it locked out the game exactly as long as it needed to. I can drop Ranger this turn which can untap Seasoned Dungeoneer, give me two blockers for Recruiter, and give me the attacker for next turn. I just need them to not have another Solitude in their hand. And Ranger will pick up Savannah to do the untapping, because I can't get the blue down anyway, but having Savannah unlocked gives me Plow next turn. Surprise, Scribby. And as long as I keep the initiative, they're dead to trap. Solitude doesn't even get them out of this, actually. Okay, Solitude, Pitchcast, Spirit of the Lab. Targeting my Scribs. Scribs will untap Season Dungeoneer. Is their last card in hand also Solitude? Because they Pitchcast that one, but they had Vile on 5. Are they going to thread the needle here? With the third Solitude? Okay, no. I got the blocks. That was weird. Terrifying and strange. We got the GGs in the chat. Okay, uh... That game was a lot more interesting than the first one, but that's the power of stasis. Uh, we just let them stoneforge, let them cauldra, let them have the initiative for a turn, and then, surprise, you got nothing. On to the next round. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the new YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of 7 Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. 7 Factor's small teams of high-performing engineers build custom mobile apps, APIs, and highly scalable systems for Fortune 500 companies and ambitious startups with great ideas. If you'd like to hire 7 Factor, or maybe join their team, contact them through their website at 7factor.io. And don't forget to subscribe to 7 Factor's YouTube for every episode of Dev Better. On the play with a hierarch start, I'm going to keep. Just to ponder to make this one happen, but I'm fine with that. There's a lot of explosive potential out of this deck, and I'm okay taking a little time to set up here. Uh-oh. They might not give me time to set up. Oh, it's a Underground Sea Delver deck, not a combo deck. Cool. Birds of Paradise. I could ponder now, or I could just bird Hierarch attack for two and have millions of mana to operate with the rest of the game. I think I like that. Hierarch number two. Bird of Paradise. If I get Thoughts eased here, that'll be a huge bummer. But otherwise, in for two. I could have still pondered and not attacked this turn and still cast all my spells. But I think just untapping with six mana next turn and see where this ponder goes. Sounds good to me. Elver flipped, revealing snuff out. Okay. Well, none of these are good targets now. This could be Death Shadow, but... Delver has been playing Snuff Out all on its own lately without Shadows. We'll see on the next fetch land, I guess. Wow, just fired the Snuff Out on Noble Hierarch. Okay, all right, now I get it. I get it. Fair enough. Glad I made the investment in my mana that I did. And found a Brainstorm. I'm going to start with that one. So we're fetching in response. What, what now? Are we Grixis? Is this a main deck Pyroblast? Minor misstep. Yep, sure. That works. It's annoying, but it works. Ponder. And the Nuts, which is Scrib Ranger. Unfortunately, I'd have to shuffle away this Brainstorm if I want to Scrib right now. So I'm just not going to Scrib right now. I can take another three. But Scrib Ranger stabilizes against Insectile Aberration. Okay, Water Grave. You are Dash Shadow. Cool. And by cool, I mean, uh-oh. Just so we're clear on the terminology that I'm using. Black, black in the pool. What's going on here? Oh, Gurmag Angler, sure. Okay, I'm going to fetch for a Savannah and then play Brainstorm and see what happens. I'd love to find Swords to Plowshares right now and then be completely stable. White Plume Adventure is dangerous. Seasoned Dungeoneer, also dangerous. Exploration, not helpful. How much mana can I have next turn? One, two, three, four, five, six. Playing two lands won't change the amount of mana I have. Oh, uh, would it? Because the first room of the dungeon. I think I need all of my cards. Like if this was just Ancestral Recall, 
I could cast White Plume and Season Dungeoneer next turn, but I don't think I get to do that right now. Protection from creatures versus the untap. I think the untap is better. They pass the turn. Hopefully Scribs gets in front of Delver this turn. Helpful Strix, you got it. My thoughts. Okay, they're taking my White Plume Adventure. Let's hope they can't reanimate it right now. I have another Initiative Beast on top of the deck. Wow, Force Blue card. Uh, yeah, this is going to get the job done. Uh, they are at six, though. Or now they're at four. Does White Plume, or does, uh, these in Dungeoneer help me here? I mean, yes, because it has protection from creatures and they're hellbent, and I just need to turn it sideways one time and they die. Okay, I just got to survive this turn, which means if I fetch, I go to four. Oh, I have to block, block. Shit. I'm one life away here. Wow, that sucks. Yeah, if I could season Dungeoneer without cracking a fetch land, I'd just chump block. Or no, I'm I'm dead anyway. Or no, because if I'm at five, I can take the hits from the flyers. I chump block Gurmag Angler. But at four, I can't do that. Bummer. So annoying. Okay, I'll fetch another Savannah. Play this season, Dungeoneer. Leave up the blocker. Now we're both playing face up right now. Get the island, I play the island, and then I chump block two things, and then I die on the following turn. Gotta hope they mess up this attack. There's been a long pause in the start of combat. They were doing the math. Yeah, they figured out that this attack is completely safe, and I'm dead. And they get the initiative. Yeah, okay. God, that's so annoying. One life point. Magic the Gathering. Okay, Swords of Plowshares comes in. And Cluster Storm comes in. I don't love Force of Will. Could bring in a bunch of Endurances and just be a mid-range deck that also has a Stasis kill. Endurance messes with Delver and Delve. I don't think I care about the rest of these cards. I like my creatures, I like my soft counters, I like my initiative, I like my stasis. And that's that. Let's go. On the play, this hand I don't think is a keep. I mean, Island Ponder, can I betray my brand like this? It's not going anywhere quick though. Exploration, when I'm already just viewing off cantrips to hit land drops, I'm going to mulligan this. This is not the way. Well, here's an even worse one. Straight to five we go. Okay, I mean, rewarded. This is the stone nuts for what we're playing with here. I mean, this hand collapses to Thoughtseize, Days, Force of Will, Removal Spell, yeah, whatever. It just everything that is in my opponent's hyper-efficient tempo deck. But this is the turn three goldfish on a mold of five. Ponder, okay. Did not shuffle. He didn't fire off a snuff out either. All right, adventurer, let's go. If they daze, they daze. If they force, they force. But I don't think waiting another turn is the way. Okay, adventurer resolved. I'm gonna search for an island and pass. And Thoughtseize is annoying. Most creatures are fine. Him to Tarak has a. 33% chance of failing. Delphal Strix, sure. I guess that means I have to Lost Well. Yeah, I'm going into the Lost Well. Birds of Paradise and Endurance. Okay. Are these cards good and helpful? Birds of Paradise can block, but so can Endurance. If I play Stasis now, I can Endurance on their turn, but then I wouldn't be able to pay for stasis. So that's not, that's a non-starter. If the Strix attacks once and they take the initiative once, I don't think I care. I'm worried about snuff out. I'm gonna bottom endurance and top birds of paradise. I, I guess I wanna see if stasis resolves first before I make an attack. Stasis, stasis resolved. And I'll drop my birds of paradise here. And I'm not going to offer the trade. And Snuff Out is just such a beating. 
because it can knock off my untap. Shit. Okay, they had it. All right. Well, now we have to navigate this the hard way. I will chump block with Birds of Paradise if I get the opportunity. If they take the initiative here with a second snuff out, I am destroyed. But it's strand. They attack. I block. I'm just going to pay what I can into the stasis. I can keep it alive two more turns right now, or three with the stash. And I'm just going to try to slide through the dungeon. And then I get I get stash and I get a land drop. I can get the skeleton and the throne of the dead three with what's available to me right now. And if throne finds another white plume, but two are gone already. One's in my hand, one's dead. Shocked and watery grave. I guess that makes sense because it's not doing any better than that. That's a tropical island to pay with. Into the catacombs I go. Pay for stasis. Seasoned dungeoneer. Uh. Drawing all these creatures that I want to put in with Throne kind of hurts right now. Not going to lie. I can see what Throne hits next turn before I decide if I'm going to pay for Stasis. But I'm really looking for White Plume Adventurer to just shut the door. Death Shadow frequently plays Reanimate, and there is a White Plume in, in my graveyard. If they reanimate that, basically dead. So I guess my Skeleton has Menace. That would probably connect. They're doing something here. Making big moves. Plague Engineer on Skeleton? Or on Human Druid? Probably Skeleton, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, Throne of the Dead 3. Give me the White Plume Adventurer. I'm gonna go into the throne first. White Plume Adventurer. White Plume Adventurer. Two Scrib Rangers. Okay, I mean... That does keep... Stasis alive for multiple more turns. Yes, pay for stasis. Draw for turn. Another scribs. The scribs can trade with Plague Engineer. And we just keep sliding through the dungeon. Crack and a fetch. A creature has hexproof currently. Down to seven. Emergency ponder. They're looking for snuff out. Or I guess the noble hierarch, because Scrib Ranger is untouchable right now. Here's the attack. This block is required. An untapped noble hierarch bouncing the other tropical island. You get a trade there and bought myself a couple more turns. All right, cool. They've had enough. Uh, this was kind of dicey. I'm not sure that I had the hooks in yet, but uh, they've they've seen enough, it seems. Cool. That was a sweet game. They didn't see an endurance. We saw Plague Engineer. I don't think anything changes. I don't think they've seen a sword supply shoes yet either. I did reveal 10 cards off the top of my deck. I didn't even look at what I showed them, so they could have all sorts of information. I just looked at the two cards I could put into play off the run of the dead three and not all the information I gave them. This hand's kind of weird. It's not going anywhere, but it does keep me alive for a long time. And sword supply shoes is one of the best cards against Death Shadow. Right, I'm going to trust the cantrips and, and payoffs in my deck here. Rock this towards the plowshare's hand. They chose to shuffle. Great. How about a noble hierarch? That would be a great draw. Stasis, not mad about it. Pieces are coming together now. Another ponder. Now we get another shuffle. Did not shuffle this time. And did not make a land drop. Fascinating. What did they like that much that they would keep over... Trying to find their second land drop. Force of Will and Snuff Out are the cards that come to mind. Maybe they have a Torpor Orb. That is a card I've lost to. Out of Death Shadow before. Thoughtseize. Yeah, have a look. I played the Tropical Island on purpose to try to draw out a wasteland in this handful of lands with my opponent sputtering and missing land drops. I'm, I don't mind them using this resource early on a thing that I don't care about. If they surgical my stasis is, that would be annoying, but still winnable. I just have to be an initiative deck. Speaking of annoying, more land drops. We're a brainstorm away from, from getting loose here. Silver. They know about my grip full of plows. I'm not going to fire one off just yet. About brainstorm. Killing me deck. Killing me. Sudden edict was revealed. Okay, that doesn't change. Swords to plowshares at all. 
I am going to plow Delver. This keeps their life total flush, makes Death Shadow worse. They can't spell Pierce, can't fluster. We have seen Minor Misstep, which I guess I should have plowed on my turn. I just ran right into Minor Misstep. I forgot we saw that in game one. It's bad. Loosey goosey. Okay, we got to force a will out of it. That I will take. Okay, I mean, this could be bait for a Gurmag Angler, but if they care that much to force protect this insectile aberration, I'll present another one for one opportunity here. They show me they don't have minor misstep and that they care about Delver, and they're just passing. How about that brainstorm deck? You sack of crap. Okay, pass the turn. I have 10 of the 20 lands in my deck represented, and I've literally not drawn a spell since I got my opening hand. In what way am I dead now? Am I just getting murktided? Having done nothing for the whole game? Oh, they changed their mind. They, they put blue blue in the pool, and then untapped it and passed the turn. Okay, birds of paradise, get after it. This does give them a snuff out target, which could turn on shadows in their hand. But it blanks this sudden edict until they do something else. And it gives me a mana dork for White Bloom Adventurer to turn on stasis. How about a spell? A good spell, please. I'm losing my mind. Good news, though. There's only nine lands left in my 44 card deck. We have good odds. And my opponent seems afraid to do anything. They know my hand is stasis, tropical island, and one mystery card. Uh oh, they're casting a spell. Okay. Yeah, if they name Bird with this, it's not a big deal. They could just take their, their free money here, or they could name something scarier down the road. But I don't even know what that would be, so probably not. Oh my god! Gonna freak out, gonna lose my mind. There's only eight lands left in my 43 card deck now. Barak. Okay. Uh, so they were trying to wait for four mana to Tarak, and just haven't gotten there. Okay, I normally roast people for talking about deck thinning, but right now, there's I still have two fetches. I'm not wasting any value on a brainstorm or anything. And getting... <laughs> gonna freak out. I am gonna freak out. I'm quitting magic. It's over. This is the last league I will ever record. This is the last game I'll ever record. It's done. I go to 11 here. I will fetch again. Tropical Island. Get into play. There are five lands left in my deck. Can I have a brainstorm, please? Scrib Ranger, notably not a bird. And trade with Tarak, except I know they have sudden eating. I guess I'll drop the Scribby and... I could actually stasis here and just freeze up for a while. Knowing they have sudden an edict is kind of a bummer. But knowing their decks will have discard spells is a bigger bummer. Alright, I gotta stem the bleeding with a, a defensive stasis, which is never how you want to cast this card. Okay, they had the force of will anyway, pitching Murktide Regent. Okay, that's why they put blue in the pool earlier than changed their mind. It's because they were saving that as their blue card for force. Ponder. I will try to trade with Tarak here. It'll at least flush out the Sudden Edict. Elful Strix, okay. It is a bird, but Plague Engineer, asymmetrical. And they found the land off of that cantrip to still hold up Sudden Edict. Okay, big scribs, go. See if this is worth an Edict, or they'll just trade Tarak for it. It looks like they are at least willing to see if I'm going to block. They could still Edict and save Tarak if they care, but I wouldn't, personally. I'd be more worried about Season Dungeoneer. How about Brainstorm? Oh my god. Okay, Noble Hierarch, go. Not a bird. Notably. Famously not a bird. Oh, you have Brainstorms. I don't have Brainstorms, but you do. That's fine. Totally reasonable. Kick a guy while he's down, why don't you? Opponent. Death Shadow is here. Death Shadow is here again. Death Shadow's here again. Oh my god, Swords of Plowshares is Plague Wind. I can plow the Plague Engineer, kill all the shadows. Come on, deck. If there was ever a time to not be a dick anymore, now's the time. It's now. This is the time to stop being a, a dick. Uh, I guess I'm dead on board, so I will take any percentage here and take my 
my shuffle. There are four lands left in my deck. There's the plowshares. Endurance. No, not helpful. Well, that was one of the worst games I've ever recorded. I have 15 of the 20 lands in my deck. The spells that I cast this game were the four that I kept in my opening hand. And then I drew two mana dorks and an endurance when I'm already dead. So, great. That's magic. On to the next one. For the absolute best Magic the Gathering apparel on the market, check out the link in the video description to coalesceapparel.shop and be sure to use the code Boston Roll for 10% off when you check out. I'm on the draw with Tropical Island Ponder. I'm going to keep it. It's a little risky, but after last game, maybe I'm a little willing to trust my deck to draw lands. Well, we're playing against Delver, so uh, no mercy from the enemy here. Guaranteed Wasteland situation. About Basic Island off the top. Misty Rainforest, Basic Island, come on. If they kept their card on top of Dragon's Rage Channeler, then didn't bobble me. I wonder if they forgot or if that was intentional. Like there's a daze on top that now they can't play. That would be great. I did not draw a land. Bondra, let's go. Help me out here. Just show me three lands. That would be great. I'll take a land and another Ponder. Hierarch is tempting, though. Yeah, I'll take the land and the Hierarch. Still haven't popped their bobble. They got plans for that one. That's not a wasteland. Show me the money. Yeah, they used bobble on themselves. They were saving it to get additional card selection. Fair enough. Play into the slow game. They draw for bobble. I play Noble Hierarch, and I have Spell Pierce back up. My top card is Ponder. If I have to Spell Pierce, then I don't get Savannah. But let's hope I don't have to Spell Pierce. How about that? But if they have any Lightning Bolt, they're going to crack it off here. Brainstorm in the end step. I'm not going to fight over that. I'll fight over a Lightning Bolt, though. They have three card types in their graveyard. Fetched a mismatching Volcanic Island. They're just trying to get in my head now. Kept their card on top. I will Spell Pierce see this. Tropical Island, Spell Pierce. And they have Days. I don't think I want to point a Force of Will at this. Yeah, I'd rather try to win a fight over White Bloom Adventure, though this flying creature is a problem. They just cut me off white mana. I need a fetch land. Like, I want to force Merc Tide Regent this turn. That's what I'm saving this force for. They didn't have that. They didn't have a land drop. I did draw White Source. Okay, let's see if my gamble paid off. They literally just need to cast a sorcery. If they kept the card on top, I'm going to force here. Force pitching force. Keep the spell pierce. This tutors up the next land, which can get Dizen Dungeoneer. If we end up just slapping this initiative back and forth, let's go. Okay. They have not gotten the initiative yet. Expressive Iteration gets them there. Ponder gets them there. A Lightning Bolt just clearing my creature works too. And they milled a sorcery, giving them the initiative. And they found Wasteland. Ah! Thought we were making a game out of this, but we're not. Yeah, it's uh, kind of too late to do anything here. What can I even do? Well, there's a white source. I will keep hope. They went into Lost Well. Probably the correct one. Stupid Wasteland. I hate it so much. Expressive Iteration, I also hate. I'm actually going to pierce this. I think I'm far enough behind that I can't let them do anything. And my only chance is to YOLO this season Dungeoneer onto the stack. I can't spell pierce to protect my creature anyway. I'm going to be tapped out. So just shove what I can shove. Vanna Island, season Dungeoneer. Please don't have another days. This is an outrage. All right, I'm out of here. Okay, playing against Is It Delver. Hydroblast, Fluster Storm, Swords of Plowshares, Endurance all come in. Rest in Peace has play to it as well. That's in the maybe pile. Force of Will is out. I don't think I want Exploration, not because it isn't good, but because I just don't have room with all the stuff I'm piling in here. I could thin down on Stasis, which might seem weird because that's the deck I'm playing. But if I have this Swords to Plowshares, Endurance, Hydroblast, wall of protection up just having a couple stasis in the deck to jam when it's time rather than 
gumming up my hand early with them when I don't want them against the Pyroblast Daze deck that's not going to let me turbo stasis them. I like Spell Pierce. I'm bringing in Flusterstorm. I like Spell Pierce so much. Scrib Ranger is great. Yeah, I don't have room for rest in peace. Endurance is, is doing that work. Let's go. Well, here's this shit again. I'm going to keep, though. I have Noble Hierarch this time to support it. I go Tropical Island, Noble Hierarch. On the play, one of them is going to survive unless they force of will my Hierarch to jam the Wasteland on me. Lightning Bolt. Hate it. How about a land? Not a land. Ponder is pretty good, though. If Ponder finds any green source, I could replay Hierarch. Oh my god, please. Why? Shuffle. Fetch land. God damn it. I guess I'll take one more draw step, but uh, after running 15 lands off the top of my deck last round and then missing on a draw step, ponder, everything, this game, all right, we're done. We're not recovering from this. On to the last round. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the play in the final round. This hand is explosive, it needs a payoff, but I'm going to keep it. My deck has not been good to me the last two rounds, as far as uh, mutual trust. But I'm going to keep giving it because I'm a glutton for punishment. Exploration. Ooh, there's a pause on exploration. Are they going to force this? That would actually be fine with me. They are going to force this. Force pitching ponder. Cool. The one of exploration just pivoted into him to Turok duty. Prismatic Vista. Island. Preordain. A Prismatic Vista, Preordain. Ponder and Force of Will. I assumed mid range like a uh, mid ranger control deck until I saw preordain which is normally only in combo decks we'll keep an eye on that situation and I'm going to play birds of paradise with spell pierce protection and save brainstorm with the fetch land for next turn the preordain top bottomed by the way knight's whisper that's also a card in combo decks uh I think I just want to use my mana here and beat up on this thing Starting to feel like Doomsday. Which means I can shuffle away the Sword Supply shares. I'd like to find... Okay. Uh, if I put back Plow and Misty, I can play Noble Hierarch this turn and Flash and Scribs and then get the, the Stasis hooks in next turn. Uh, let's see what happens. Reordain. By not attacking for one, I told them I have a two-mana play. I think that's okay. They bottom-bottom the Preordain. Doomsday doesn't play Prismatic Vista, though. Like, what's going on over here? Okay. Some kind of Esper strategy. Let's hope that they just die to Stasis right now. Gonna get Savannah, Flash, and Scribs. Are you a Daze deck? Do you think Force of Will's important here? What's going on? Another Scribs. I'll start by attacking for two. That part's definitely gonna happen. And I still have my land drop. I can go uh, green, 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 scribs. I'm just kind of hanging this out there because they've been hesitating like they have counter magic. And if they do, I want to give them every chance to use it on things that aren't stasis. Okay, here we are. Moment of truth. Force of will, pitching force of will. They did have force of wills going nuts over there. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have spell pierced that first Knight's Whisper because if I... Here's that force there. We're driving. I guess we'll see how we die here. Night's Whisper is very weird. Didn't want that. Attacking with two creatures gives the same damage as attacking with one, but now I don't get completely shut down by a single removal spell. Consider. This is a combo deck. Yeah, Lotus Petal. This is some sort of weird basic land-based Doomsday deck. If I was going to hold back this land, I should have untapped Scrib Ranger and played a different land that was free to do, and I just didn't execute on it. Unlikely to matter, but still a concern. Okay, they thought for a long time, then passed the turn. Okay, now I have attack for three if I only put one creature into the red zone. A little softer to removal, but 
if they are a doomsday deck going to six while i have three powers worth of attackers in play means they can't make a pass the turn pile this time i'll remember it on tap my creature okay they appear to be passing the turn again there's a plowshare is probably not helpful in this matchup based on what we've seen so far i don't think that's going to get me there Bonin is dead on board, though, so whatever's about to happen, we're going to learn what it is, or they're going to concede. Those are the only two outcomes here. Okay, <laughs> we got the concede one. Like, Doomsday is a deck with a disaster of a mana base. It's a mono-blue deck splashing for a black-black-black spell, and Prismatic Vista as a core of the mana base and basic island basic planes in the deck is really suspicious. But consider Lotus Petal, Knight's Whisper are all combo cards. I was already suspicious on the Preordain, and then they showed me all this shit too. I'm going to treat this like a combo deck, though I don't know for sure if it's specifically Doomsday. Or it could be Doomsday with a mess of a game one mana base to set up a game two pivot. I'm still cutting all my Swords of Plowshares. If I lose to Stoneforge Mystic or Monastery Mentor this game, then that is and we'll adjust in game three. Yeah, I'll cut the exploration again. This doesn't seem like a matchup that that one is for. Then a bunch of endurances and fluster storm. Do I want collector oof? We've seen one Lotus Petal in their deck so far. There's not a card I want to cut for collector oof, so I'm going to go in like this. Now, this basic island hurts here. I like the endurance and in its island ponder. Which, all memes aside, I'm not going to go turbo fast against this deck. Okay, Duress gets to take one of the Ponders. It sees the Endurance. And all the Mana Dorks. Savannah, Mana Dork, got there. They have perfect information, but I think this investment is still worth it. If they can combo out through a, an Endurance. Rafine's Tower, come on. Why this happening over there? That wouldn't be in a Doomsday deck. It's too irresponsible. Even worse than having basic lands in the mana base. Is this some sort of like peer into the abyss storm situation? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I'm going to run out my birds. I'm not going to attack for one. I'm going to hold up scribs. I have pitch cast endurance and pitch cast force right now. They haven't seen the force. Brainstorm in the end step. Is this some kind of Esper show and tell? Like Esper Omni tell? Is that what's going on? But that doesn't explain Knight's Whisper. I should have boarded in Surgical just to see what the heck is going on. A brainstorm has resolved. What's going on over there? Tell me now, or forever hold your peace. Dark Ritual. Duress. Shit. Okay, well. I'm losing my force of will. That was a good Duress. They must not care about Endurance if they're making their moves, because Duress can't take that card. Another Dark Ritual. Four in the pool. I just got nosed right now. Doomsday. Okay, you are Doomsday. Been Doomsday the whole time. Weird, twisted, maniac Doomsday. I almost wish that the rest they cast was Thoughtseize. Like they thought they could clear Endurance but had to pivot onto Force of Will. But because it was Duress and they're still moving with this confidence, I know that they think they can beat Endurance. Which I don't like. Let's get a look at this deck. Why does it look like this. Engineered Explosives, Teferi Time Raveler, Orem's Chant, Repeal. Okay, so we're splashing for Orem's Chant, is what's going on. Another Dark Ritual. Okay. We're Doomsdaying again? Or is this old school Doomsday Tendrils? That would be fun. Okay, Engineered Explosives is here. And... Do I want to put my Scrib Ranger into play, or do I want it to be pitch castable next turn? Like, I can cast Scrib Ranger, or I could keep it in hand as a green card. It's actually really tough. I'm going to float green, then let this happen. Wait, I can just main phase Endurance, and hopefully mess up their stuff while developing. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, they set up this pile knowing that I had Endurance. I think I'm just going to Endurance them right now in the main phase. And then 
right a white plume next turn. Here's Endurance. They are currently Hellbent. I'll put those four cards into their graveyard, or from their graveyard into their deck. And hope that that means they can't get Thoracle this turn. They can attack for four now. Put them to five, at which point White Plume Adventure is Lethal Beagle. I need to float mana before I bounce this land. And unfortunately, my island is the land that's already in play, so I won't be able to ponder after all this. Okay, all right. Uh, I guess I tucked enough cards that they couldn't recover before their life points ran out. A 3-2, a positive record with this. The loss, or the wins were all very cool. We got some stasis wins, we got some initiative wins. I like that the deck can do both. One of the losses attributed to one of the worst floods in the history of this channel, but that's okay, that happens in the game. And then the other one, I kept a an aggressive hand against Delver, and they happened to have Lightning Bolt into Wasteland into my Ponder also missed on land. And just killed me early and often. This build of the deck felt really solid. I do want a Disenchant in here somewhere. I mentioned Brazen Borrower in the last wrap-up deck tech, but I ended up going just leaning hard on Swords to Plowshares instead, which was great. That card earned its spot in the main deck. I wonder if we need six mana dorks. Like, could Birds of Paradise just be a Brazen Borrower? Maybe one of the Preordains could be Brazen Borrower. I think the sixth bird and the second and third preordains are both flex slots you can mess with, but you do need to keep your blue count high. Maybe with five and six mana dorks, you don't need 20 lands also, but the deck is really mana hungry. You could try to cheat and play 19 lands, get another spell in here, but we did lose games to both Flood and Screw, so uh, trust the math on that one, not the, the play pattern necessarily, or, or not what you've seen unfold, because that's just, just variance, but having 26 mana sources in the deck, the, the deck is nearly half mana right now. I don't think that's a problem, but I think you could cheat it a little more if you want to. Maybe play two basic forests instead of three. Let the mana dorks do the, the talk and get another spell in there. As far as disenchant effects, Torpor Orb is a huge problem for this deck. So is Chalice of the Void. And we don't currently have answers to either of those cards. I'd like to play Lauren of the Third Path because she has Vigilance and functions under Stasis. But also, that doesn't answer Torpor Orb, which is one of the identified problems. Two Brazen Borrowers could do that job, but the sideboard could probably find a spot for... I don't think you want, like, Kasali Pride Mage. Like, we're not a Greens and Zenith deck, even though we could be. But that takes up a lot of deck slots, and it doesn't get the initiative cards. Yeah, it's probably just Nature's Claim, just, but that one doesn't answer Chalice of the Void. It could be Prismatic Ending. Just put a couple prismatic endings in the sideboard, or even, like, one of the birds is not blue anyway, so you could turn a bird into a prismatic ending. And then add another one to the sideboard if you're worried about that. And then turn one or two preordains into brazen borrowers. That gives you a lot more interaction, and doesn't change your blue card at all, or blue count at all. Or that 20th land, go down to 19 lands, add a prismatic ending. That could be a way to go as well. And that's where I'm going to leave this, the third and hopefully final installment of this Stasis Initiative. I think I've run this thing about as far as it can go. I'm happy with where it's landing with those changes, with the Brazen Bars and Prismatic Endings that we just talked about. I think that's a pretty polished list from where we started until now. Joyami, thank you for inspiring this adventure originally and for following up many months later and getting this more polished version out into the world everyone else thanks for watching we all love stasis on this channel i appreciate you be sure to like comment subscribe check out the patreon and i'll see you next time